Well, hello and good afternoon. Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about what a gradient function is. Get you rock solid with what they mean and how you can use them. So let's start off with a function. This one right here. It's pretty ugly, right? Well, a function named f like this one has inputs and outputs like x and y. And if you graph them, what you're doing is you're graphing all of those matched pairs of x's and y's. And you can find all of those values from a t-chart like this. Now, you're not going to be making a t-chart. I just want to start with the basics so you really know where we're starting. So this would work like this. You know, you would take these values and plug them in, just like that. And you get 324 for the first one. And I went ahead and gave you all the others. So these are all of the ordered pairs that we're going to make our graph of f of x from. So let's go ahead and plot those on a xy coordinate plane. It's kind of hard to see what it is. It's definitely not a straight line. So... It's got a different slope at every single point. This is what it would look like. And here are all of our coordinates from our t-chart. All right, let's get rid of our t-chart. And since we're doing calculus, let's talk about slope. Calculus is very interested in slope. The slope here is negative 495. And at negative 6.5, it's negative 318. And at negative 6, it's negative 176. Now, if you were to find these values yourself, I did round them just so they fit on the screen. So, you know, I took a little bit of liberty just so that they would fit, but you get the idea. All right, now, this makes sense. All of these slopes are negative, which makes sense because the graph is decreasing from left to right. So it's going down and down and down. So we've got those three slopes. That makes pretty good sense to me. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this a little bit. Let's talk about that the, the fact that a derivative is how you find the slope. The original function is f of x and the slope of f of x is called f prime of x. That's what that little notation means. So since the slope at negative 7 is, well, negative 495, so when x is negative 7, we know the slope is this. Well, this is what we would write. Now let's see how that makes sense. The derivative, f prime, well, that gives us the slope at the input of negative 7. Now is means equals, right? And well, our slope was negative 495. So what we're going to do is we're going to write it this way. Do you see? At negative 7, the slope is negative 495. So the thing on the top, negative 7, 324, well, that's the input and the output for this function right here. And this thing on the bottom, well, that is the slope of the function at x equals negative 7. That is what we're going to use to make our gradient function. All right. Now, of course, this point is in the correct spot. Negative 7, negative 495. Well, that would be in the third quadrant. So what we're going to do to show you how to make a, well, the idea behind making a gradient function is we're going to find all of these slopes for our points, and then we're going to graph them appropriately, and we're going to compare the gradient function to the original. So hopefully you get a really rock-solid idea of what it all means, okay? All right, so now here's our other three slopes. Now let's talk about this one right here, negative 5, 11, and 71. Well, to the left of it, it's the slope is negative. To the right of this point, the slope is positive. So right there where it turns around, that's called a turning point, the slope is zero. All turning points have a slope of zero. So that's a very key piece of information. We know the slope here is zero. We know the slope here is zero as well. All right. So let's go ahead and put our points back on the board. And all of their slopes are right here. All right. Now, I'm going to graph all of these slopes. So i got to zoom out a little bit because, well, I've got some pretty small numbers there. And I'm only going down to 126, and I'm going to go down to 318. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit, move everything around. All right, let's start graphing these points. So negative 7 and negative 495. Well, that doesn't even fit on our screen, so I'm just going to get rid of that one. But uh, at 6.5, we know that the slope, negative 6.5, we know the slope is negative 318. So that's down here in the third quadrant. All right, we know it. Also, at negative 6, the slope was negative 176, so the x value didn't change. We're just moving the y around. We know that at negative 511, that is right on the x-axis because y is equal to 0. And just moving them all around just like this, right? So let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Let's put all the other points on there because I think you get the idea, right? So let's go ahead and plot all these points, move them around. And this is the shape we have. 
Now this last point right here, it didn't fit, so we just, you know, it went off the screen. It would be way up there. So, so we have a, a good view. This is what we're looking at. Man, that's kind of hard to see what it is. So let's go ahead and put our graph over the top. In blue is our gradient function. Do you see all the x's are the same, but now the y's actually describe the slope of the function that's, well, red. So let's get rid of it and clean this up a little bit. Let's talk about our gradient function just by itself, all right? Now, uh, this is the input for the original function, and this is the slope for the original function at that input of x equals negative 4. So f prime of negative 4, so the input for the gradient function is the same as the input for the regular function, but the output is the slope of the parent function. So that's the big idea right there. That's kind of cool. We also have our turning points. We can see them from the gradient function. Anywhere that our function crosses the x-axis, y is 0. Well, since y is a slope, a slope of zero is a turning point. So we have a turning point here and here and one more over here on the right. All right, now let's talk about, well, let's talk about some intervals here. So if your gradient function is below the x-axis, well, that means that the slope of the parent function is negative because the outputs are the slope of the other function, the original function. Now there's one other interval, right, that is negative. Can you see where it is? It's right here from negative 0 0.9 to 3.8. So the slope is negative. The slope of the parent function is negative from negative infinity to negative 5.11 and from negative 0 0.9 to 3.8. Everywhere else, the slope is positive. So between here and here, our gradient function is above the x-axis, so that means that all of the y's between here and here are positive, so that means that all the points have a positive slope on the parent function between this point and this point. All right, now there's another one, of course, from 3.8 to positive infinity. It's also got a positive slope. So let's go ahead and put our original function back on here. Now, one of the things you've got to be really, really careful of when you're dealing with these is don't mix up which function is which. The blue function with the little mark right there, that means this is the gradient function. It is showing the slope of the red function at equal x's. So right here, this point for x is way above this one. Do you see? But that's because the slope here is fairly steep. It's all the way up there. Ah, that's kind of neat, right? Got to be careful with it, though. So as you can see, we've got these two intervals right here. Remember, we just said that this means that there's a negative slope from negative infinity until this value for x. And if you look at the parent function, it has a negative slope. It's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing until it gets here. It doesn't matter where this, these points are above or below the x-axis for the original function. All that matters is its direction. It's going down, so it has a negative slope until it gets to right here. And then right here, the slope is zero. That's why we have it right there. That's why the gradient function is here, right? And then the other works for the positive, right? So we're increasing between this value here until we get up here. We're increasing. And you can tell that's true even if you didn't have this red function, the original parent function, because the gradient function has all positive y values between those two points. So that means the slope between here and here for the parent function is positive. That's how it works. So we have uh, intervals where the slope is negative from negative infinity all the way up to five point, negative 5.11. So here and to the left, the slope is negative, and you can see that's true, right? There's another place from uh, negative 0 0.9 right here to 3.8 right here. All of these values for y are negative. That means that the original function is going down. It doesn't matter where the original function is, if it's above or below the x-axis. It doesn't matter. We're describing the slope, right? The y value describes the slope. That's the big idea. Now, over here, the intervals where it's positive are from negative 511 to negative 0 0.9. It's above, right? So then there's a positive slope because the outputs here are positive. That reflects that the slope is positive, so the function is increasing. And, well, that brings us to one of our final big ideas, right? If we have a negative slope, then the function is decreasing. If we have on our gradient function, if we have a positive slope, right, or if we have a positive output of y, then we have a positive slope, 
for the original function. So let me say that again very clearly, just to make sure I didn't confuse you. So on our gradient function, if our outputs are positive, that means that the slope in that same interval for the parent function is also positive. So from here to here, all of the outputs are positive, which makes that the slope on the parent function is also positive. It's increasing. That's what that means. Pretty cool. All right. Now, this is pretty neat stuff. It also is very, very confusing. So one of the things we're going to talk about is, well, how would you use a gradient function to find a slope like right here? Right? Well, all you got to do is find that same exact x value on the gradient function, which would be right there. And from that x value, you figure out the y. So you can just make a horizontal line right over to the y-axis if it was on a graph. And right there, that would be the slope. Pretty cool. All right, let's see a little video right here. I made this on Desmos. And what you're seeing is that the blue function describes the slope. And the red function, well, that's the input and the output. So increasing, increasing, now it's going to be a slope of zero, and now it's decreasing, and that means we have a negative output for the blue graph, which is the gradient function, right? Now the blue graph's about to turn positive, which means that the graph, the original function, is increasing. That's how it works. So just to make it, well, hopefully, bring it all the way home, the red function is the parent function, it's just x comma y. But the other function in blue, that's x, the same x as the red one, but the y is the slope at x, whatever the x value was for the red function. That's how it works. It is a confusing concept. It's also simple at the same time. It can get fuzzy in your head super quick. I totally get why you can get totally mixed up on these things. So just be really careful of which one is which and how it works. All right. I hope this was helpful. If it was, I'd really like you to give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, all that kind of cool stuff. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.